Every 21 seconds, an individual in the U.S. sustains a brain injury. An acquired brain injury is an injury to the brain which occurs from events that are not hereditary, congenital, or degenerative, such as stroke, aneurysm, or anoxia. A traumatic brain injury occurs when an outside force impacts the head hard enough to hurt the brain, such as in a car crash or with a gunshot wound. In the next few minutes, you'll meet Megan, Jim, and Lindy, three very special people who know firsthand about the challenges of living with a traumatic brain injury. I was walking across the street and I was hit by a tow truck. Knocked me 30 feet through the air, 35 feet, I think they broke down. They had to measure that. Well, it was, it was quite challenging to deal with. We had a phone call about 7 o'clock that night, and the doctor said, drop everything, get here as soon as you can, have your husband drive. I don't think she's going to make it. I was struck by a drunk driver who was skidding 90 miles an hour around a blind curve. I landed on my back with my what was left of my right leg in between my shoulder blades. So I knew that I was probably going to bleed to death, but that was the only, my main concern was stopping the blood flow. But it was a challenging two hour drive up to um, Fletcher Allen Hospital and we never said a word. We never said a word. Remember my son saying, um, Mom, when you open your eyes, there's blood everywhere, but I'm okay. Oh my God, Mom, oh, please open your eyes. A lot of people were willing to help me and they were trying very hard. I just had to make sure to try to get them to understand where my situation was, where my capabilities were and what I was trying to achieve because if you can't communicate with people, they can't help you. It's very difficult for them. I don't think anyone who doesn't have a brain injury, whether they're a doctor or not, can understand. It's not possible because it, is, it affects you every second of every day. The first time I realized that I was in trouble was when I got lost in my own backyard. I didn't recognize the back of the house. I didn't know that I was in my own backyard and I didn't know where to go to go back in. Megan was an all-star athlete in high school and attended the University of Vermont. She creates beautiful sculptures, takes art classes, and is beginning to gain independence in a modest suburban development. Jim was an airplane mechanic who holds down a steady job and expresses himself through furniture building and oil painting. While Lindy spends her time as a peer educator and spins beautiful high quality cotton in a lovely brownstone apartment. People with traumatic brain injuries are brave, highly intelligent and creative individuals. They have goals and dreams just like you and I and need support from service providers in accomplishing these goals, despite the many physical and emotional hurdles presented by the brain injury itself. I spend most of my days compensating for the fact that I have difficulty with my memory. Um, I can talk up a storm with you and you won't even notice that I have a brain injury, but it's kind of Russian roulette, what I will remember. One of the most common problems associated with a traumatic brain injury is short-term memory loss. Tasks that were taught yesterday might very well be forgotten the next. Getting organized is very difficult. So sticky notes, lists, and calendars are all essential tools in getting through the day. And then over here is my base calendar. I have stickies, which I use every daily. I write down my plan and I tape it to my alarm clock. And then on my, my calendar, I have all the, the appointments are certainly on the calendar. And then all the people's names who I have business and connections with, 
are on here with their phone number. And then down in the right corner, I have a stack of uh, small papers which have appointments on them. And this is what keeps me oriented and focused for my daily life. Well, I was way out of it. It took me a long time, about two and a half years, to get a lot of it back. But I kept concentrating on the problems I was, I'm still having with my memory, short-term memory, and uh, but I had a lot of physical problems with my, just my nervous system, my coordination, everything was out. Since the brain injury, when I'm tired, my visual acuity decreases. Um, I get tunnel vision. Anytime there's any kind of transitions, any appointments, anything like that, your guard rises and you begin to, you need to have orientation time again. I have orientation time at least 100 times a day just to keep me in the moment, keep me in the, where I am and keep myself reminded of what, what the point of my presence is. I don't have any hearing problems from the brain injury. However, when more than one person is speaking, on a good day, I can't follow even the person that I'm paying attention to. It's hard to get myself to uh, do the things that I could usually easily do in the past. And it's, it's difficult, but you have to have a lot of perseverance. And if you don't stick to it, you'll never get anywhere with it. When you feel as though you can't work or you can't complete those goals that you set for yourself five years ago or ten years ago, when you, when you have a moment where you think about those things, you really, you, you get down. You get angry. You get just frustrated beyond, beyond registry. I was diagnosed with major depression and put myself into a mental health facility um, because I didn't trust myself not to, get, to hurt myself. I was having uh, continuing suicidal ideology. That was about 18 months after the accident. It wasn't until years later that I found out that that's about the time that people who go di di undiagnosed usually crack and everything falls apart because you're putting your brain and your emotions under so much stress trying to function as if everything was the same and nothing's the same. That is one of the largest aspects to my rehabilitation is to help learn how to control anger, frustration, fears, disinhibition, all those things because those things just end up feeling like a big fat ball that just changes colors magically in the sun. It really is a day-to-day day-to-day um, -day life for a person with a brain injury. Whereas you or I look at what are we going to do in the next five years? Uh, will I ever get to Hawaii? Uh, am I ever going to have any grandchildren? You know, all these big, you know, long-term things and goals. Meg lives day to day. Her memory isn't going to, she can't get caught up in these big, you know, goals and problems. She, she, because her memory only allows her to live in the present. Past is gone. Future we don't know. Present is here. So her biggest challenge appears to be living every day and enjoying the moment, being in the moment, living in the moment. And that's probably been our toughest challenge is she wants to push ahead. Am I ever going to get married? You know, who am I going to find? Am I, you know, and, and, and I have to force myself to bring her back into the moment. This was a great day, wasn't it? didn't we have a great dinner or didn't we, didn't we have a great walk or when we met somebody or a trip to Burlington, whatever it is, because her life is really made up of many moments. She may not remember everything about our trip to Burlington, 
but if I cue her, she'll remember the important little bits, and that's, that's what it's all about. One of the things that staff need to understand, this is not a babysitting job. These are not babies. They do not like to be treated like they are kids. They want to be treated equal as they are an adult. Well, you see a lot of people who they hear brain injury and they, they figure, well, he is so mentally retarded, he's impossible to deal with, there's nothing, it's a waste of time, we're not even going to help this person and head the other way. That's a negative attitude, it doesn't work. I do know providers that say, I help the person do this, and you really want to look at your job as the person did this and I was there in the background, I was there behind them or on the side, you know, supporting them. Um, if you set up, if you have that attitude where it's about you, what you really do is you create a sense of dependency where the person needs you to help them pay their bills or to help them, you know, budget or to help them grocery shop. And if you do things right and you put the emphasis back on the person, you set yourself in a situation where that person doesn't need you. You really want to work yourself out of a job. This is a transitional program. Independent living skills is a transitional service. There either needs to be a new and higher goal or they've achieved it and they're moving on. I get services through Mary Sue Seville who will come over and she's actually helped to motivate myself to clean up the apartment and to do laundry and to um, uh, get groceries if I need them and to also just and mostly and also to be a friend just to talk maybe play some cards um, make it make a meal together something like that you know and that's been very very helpful as well um, because it not only it helps me in the, something that I absolutely need help with, but I also need to feel okay in the mental aspects as well, and that also assists me there. Uh, I've been working with Jim for about five years as his service coordinator through the New York State Department of Health Traumatic Brain Injury Waiver. Jim doesn't trust people very There's easily. An and he was hesitant because all of his services were in one place. And here I was wanting to bring him out into the community where he wanted to be, but there was so much information I had to throw at him. So I, I think he was nervous, and I was nervous. It just took time to get to know each other and to build that trust. It wasn't one of our hardest things to deal with p turnover, turnover of service providers. Absolutely. And for a brain injured person, you need continuity. You need that same person to at least last six months. But that's, that was hard for Meg to get accustomed to different people just walking in the door and ha then they had to catch up on her case and nothing really ever gets accomplished. Mm -hmm. You Absolutely. know, you never can really move forward, whether it's in the um, dealing with a service provider who, who sets up by these things or a job coach. Turnover is, is really a rough, problem out there for for us as customers. Sometimes it's so challenging, you know, that there are times when I just walked away and just really cried because I couldn't get through to them. They were seeing it their way and it just wasn't working at that time. But you don't give up, you know. Next day you start on them again. <laughs> and sometimes the next day, as soon as you start the conversation, they agree with you and they do it. The first thing for service providers to know um, is I understand that working with us can be very frustrating. But you can never be as frustrated with us as we are with ourselves that might help. Um, the other thing that I'd like for service providers to know is that there can be joy and they need to teach 
need to find it and see it for themselves. After a person sustained a brain injury, they can find joy in their lives and see for themselves that there's joy so that they can share with other survivors. Success is in the eyes of the survivor. I'm not trying to have the people that I work with live the life that I want them to live. I'm really trying to help them identify what it is they want out of their life and find the ways that they can obtain that standard of success for themselves. Um, the, most in, the most important thing would be to learn from the people you work with. They're capable, they're, they're able, they're intelligent, and they're experts when it comes to their brain injury and how it affects them. And to do this type of work, you have to be have a love for people. You know, you have to, one of the most rewarding things that this program gives me, it makes me selfless, you know. I don't think about me. I, it's, I work with them, and that's the joy I get from it.